rain is inevitable in the Highlands. And after mostly dodging showers on the first day of our trip, the weather really caught up with us on day two. Leading a photography group to go camping on a mountain in the full knowledge that the cloud might never shift and the rain might persist is not an easy thing to do. But when there's hope in the weather forecast, it sometimes pays to roll the dice and sometimes, every so often, it works out for the best. The problem is, when you start, you never quite know which kind of day you're walking into. Earlier, one of the clients had asked me what I hoped they would get from the trip, and I described what I considered to be the perfect contrast of effort and reward, misery and elation that hiking in bad weather, followed by a complete change in fortunes, can provide. I hoped that this might be the perfect day to illustrate that point. Our goal for the hike was Benahirkil, a placid hill notable for a rock plateau on its summit. On previous visits, that plateau had been dry and a little lacking in interest, but this time I had every hope it would flood in the afternoon rain. With the profile of Sliok occasionally appearing behind us, we made steady progress up the mountain as showers drifted through. With the path now petering out, we continued up heather-covered slopes, clinging to a small stream so that we could fill up water as late as possible. We were in cloud for the rest of our hike, and now that our waterproofs had started to let us down, it was no great surprise to find the pools that we'd hoped for awaiting us at the summit. Shortly after setting up camp on saturated ground, we were treated to short-lived glimpses of the mountains of Torridon which surrounded us. But moments later, our spirits sank again as we disappeared into the cloud. But as it turned out, we'd earned ourselves a little bit of luck, and this was one of those good days.
There's a lot of excited photographers on this hill at the moment as the cloud starts to disappear because there's so many potential opportunities that I think are just about to unfold. Uh, so we've got five of us up here and they're all shooting in the direction of Ben A. But as you can probably see, there is no Ben A at the moment. It's very much hidden in the clouds still. We just had a little glimpse of it a second ago, but everybody's waiting and hoping that it's going to happen. Sometimes I find it genuinely difficult to shoot because it's just so beautiful watching these clouds move around the mountains. I know it probably doesn't look much on your screen, but it really is absolutely stunning. And it can be quite difficult actually to then do the bit of mucking around to try and find compositions that work. Of course, now we've got two peaks becoming quite prominent here. So if I zoom in, uh, framing like that with a nice foreground is uh, is almost certainly going to make a, a strong shot. So maybe that's what I should do. But oh God, it can be so hard sometimes because actually all I really want to do now is just enjoy the views because it's so beautiful. When the light and clouds are moving around like this, sometimes actually shooting is the last thing I want to do. But one of the nice things about the clouds swelling around peaks is that it can make some less prominent peaks more prominent. And that's kind of happening with the peak that you can maybe just about make out in the mist back there. That's part of Ben Jerig. And it kind of blurs into the mountains behind it, which are actually a bit more dramatic, a bit more jagged. Uh, but a second ago, the peak there was looking quite prominent and you could see a bit of the mountain behind Liech as well. Uh, so I'm going to try and find a composition using these paving stones here as my foreground and those two peaks will hopefully reappear to work as my background. So here's the foreground with these amazing broken rocks but the peaks here and here are, are what I'm really interested in as the backdrop and so what I actually need to do is make this a little narrower and I'm thinking that I need to switch to a portrait format and have that foreground a lot more dominant than it is currently. So as you can see, I'm in portrait mode and trying to solve this problem now. How do I compose this foreground and get the uh, background where I want it? So I'm composing with the background in mind first. So I have to keep the camera pointing in this direction. So by moving the camera position, I can manipulate the foreground. And some of you may have already noticed this rather distracting boulder just here. So that's actually the problem I have to solve. One thing I could do is come around here use this V and frame the rocks up like this, but then I change that direction. So I lose this peak, which you can just about make out there. I lose that as my uh, background element. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping the camera in this position. And actually, if I do that and come close here, I can kind of get away with it, but I'm not sure that I now like this shape on the right hand side in this vertical line. So I think instead I'm going to eliminate that completely coming closer like this and have these lovely broken rocks uh, just scattered across that foreground. So this is my final composition, although because I'm shooting portrait, I can't actually show you the full width of the frame, but there's a bit more room either side. And I'm just using a polarizer because you can see that's, well, actually it's not an unpolarized sky. It's a polarized sky the opposite way, but even so the polarizer makes quite a positive difference to the clarity of the sky there. And the mountain peak was just a little bit more prominent a second ago. And I'm really, really pleased with this shot. So if I'd only shot this image on the trip, I'd actually be pretty happy that we'd made the effort because I really do like this shot. There's a nice yellow blue color contrast. And actually on the subject of yellow, this is one of the few times that I actually quite enjoy that variety of yellows that you have surrounding those broken stones at the bottom there. And I think the stones themselves are very interesting because they almost look like a jigsaw puzzle. So there's a mini story there uh, trying to figure out what's actually happened that's caused these rocks to break up in the way that they have. And the backdrop is, is quite pretty too. It's a shame that I didn't get that second peak that you could actually see in that uh, video clip I showed you a second ago. Um, it's just to the left of Ben Jerig, So we're missing this uh, peak on, on Leach and it would have been great to have that. Uh, but as it is, I think it works perfectly well without it. And to have that reflection tying together the blue sky and the ground, I think that's really nice for the sort of coherence of, of the image. So that was a great one to get started with. This is what we really came for to see these pools. That was the benefit of walking up in the rain. And here we're looking towards Ben A, but as you can see, it's hidden in the clouds and I suspect it will be for the rest of the evening. But if it does clear, 
I'm going to be returning to this kind of composition. Obviously, I'd need to actually find some structure here, but you can see there's lots of potential. There's lots of these pools around and you just need to find uh, the right level of randomness or otherwise a nice foreground rock to anchor your composition and uh, it should work pretty well. This is another scene that I think will work. I quite like these stones here just perched on these broken pavings. I think uh, there's plenty of foreground potential there. Again, we need the mountain to clear and I'm probably going to have to clone our tents out, which is something I will do from time to time if, I, uh, if I've pitched my tent in the shot. Sometimes I'll leave it in, but sometimes I will digitally remove it because I sort of think, well, I could take the tent down, but it's clearly not worth the effort. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a potential shot there. And you can see actually the mountain is starting to break free a little bit. So let's hope we get lucky. So I can't talk you through the shot that I just took too much because I've got to get out of the way for the other guys, but the mountain has cleared and what a scene that is. That is something special. It's actually a lot better than I could have possibly hoped for really coming up here in that rain. To have it clear and have these clouds then envelop the mountains, I mean, it's a far cry from where we were an hour ago, just hiding in the mist and, and really feeling quite cold and damp. So this group has really, uh, well, su suffered to get to this point, to be perfectly honest. It's not fun hiking up mountains in the rain and particularly not setting up camp and uh, getting wet and cold in the mist. But oh, when it, when it comes off, it's just so exciting, as you can probably tell, because I'm grinning quite a lot at the moment. This image really represents the realization of the plan, the entire reason that we'd gone up the mountain in the first place to find this rock plateau flooded with water and hopefully for the weather to clear, which there was a hint of in the forecast. Uh, lots of the guys didn't think it would happen. I was certainly uncertain myself, but of course it did. And uh, we were pretty richly rewarded uh, on, on this particular evening. I mean, not only do you have an amazing cloudscape here in the way it's wrapping around the mountain, but we also have very still air. So the reflections in the pools there are very clear, which really does add an extra dimension to the image. So I'm actually going to put this as a summer month in my 2022 calendar, which I'll talk uh, more about at the end of this video. Um, but really, this is a, a pretty satisfying image for me personally because I like to photograph the mountains very extensively and when I come across scenes that I think are significant or even iconic then I want to give them my very best and I'll often return to this same composition uh, until I can achieve the kind of lighting conditions that I think would suit the subject. So uh, this is the kind of image that I'll find incredibly hard to improve upon of course um, if I shoot in, in this way uh, but it's just incredibly rewarding uh, when these moments do happen and I may well uh, print this one and uh, and put it up on the wall. There is way too much to shoot today I really don't know where to start so I'm trying to go as fast as I possibly can but I've just come to a slightly different part of the plateau and we can look down into this valley and of course there's the amazing cloud swirling through and these two pretty prominent peaks behind me even though they're a bit flatter than some of the other mountains but it's actually that river that I'm going to focus on just shoot a very tight telephoto lens shot because the way that meanders is just absolutely stunning. And quite frankly I think the video might be more beautiful than the still in this case uh, because it's just lovely watching the motion of those clouds pass over that river down there. But here is the still and uh, I desaturated the video actually but I desaturated the still even further and you can see I also added a bit of contrast just to cut through a bit of that haze to see through to the river a little better. And I'm shooting a, a long lens image here to abstract the river from the rest of the scene. Uh, that means the river could be anywhere in the world um, so it can be fun to do that and it's a nice uh, counter to those uh, more literal more illustrative uh, grand landscape scene scenes where you can obviously tell where the photograph is taken. I did also take another long lens shot looking into the direction of the sun uh, just to get that layering effect that you can get from atmospheric haze when you're looking into the light like that so a nice simple shot that's the kind of thing I, I might use um, as a potential background background or, or something like that. Maybe not one for the portfolio, but uh, certainly a nice shot. I'm really having to hurry now because we have maybe five minutes, three minutes until the sun's going to dip below the horizon. So I've just shot this in portrait mode. I think it works a bit better than in landscape. So trying to make use of these cracks leading into the mountain there. And now I'm going to have one last go at finding another shot in the opposite direction. 
And at this point, the light away from the sun is starting to get very special indeed. You don't often see light this good in Scotland and uh, very exciting to, to photograph. And I think this shot uh, compositionally or conceptually, I should say, is, is pretty strong. The idea of using these uh, broken rocks, the diagonals, the geometry of the foreground, um, I think is, is a good one. Uh, but aside from the light and conditions being really beautiful, I think there's a couple of issues with the shot. And the most obvious one is that grass coming in from the left. It just creates too much imbalance. And you can imagine how much better the shot would have been if that broken rock had sort of continued through that grass there. And secondly, you're just starting to lose the mountain a bit to the cloud. It's thickened up a bit too much. In fact, it thinned out again after this, but um, at this point it's quite thick. And I think the mountain is a little bit too obscured. It doesn't work quite so well as a focal point, even though we've got some diagonal lines in that foreground leading into the mountain. And there's actually a very good reason for that. So I wasn't quite happy with this shot, but I was certainly happy with the one that I took just before it because I wanted to shoot a portrait, not in terms of format, but in terms of the uh, idea of the image of the mountain Sail Vore here. Uh, so that's the pyramidal peak that's part of Ben A. And at this point, the cloud was absolutely ideal to capture this shot. So I focused on capturing that image of the mountain and again shot that a few times as the cloud changed, which did mean slightly spoiling the, the image that I showed you previously, but I'm very pleased with this one. And for the record, this is the scene that I'm trying to shoot, but I have actually wandered all the way around looking for a foreground to shoot with this. So I might struggle, but maybe I'll just try those grasses directly in front and see what I can manage. And at this point, we are to a certain extent getting into headless chicken mode, uh, which I'm sure is a, uh, a mode of photography that many of you will be familiar with if you've had these incredible periods of light, but really just trying to make the most of every possible opportunity. And that does mean working fast. And when you've exhausted the shots that you've prepared, you're then uh, looking around um, to make, make the most of, of what time you have remaining. And I think I did okay uh, with this image. I mean, it, it's just so beautiful thanks to the color of that light. I mean, the, the light is is really something else. And the color palette of the image is, is really beautiful. I think I could have done better with the grasses. I think the, the idea um, of, of keeping this image simple uh, and just using grasses as a foreground is perfectly fine and, and could have worked really well. In fact, I think it does still work fairly well. Uh, but the proximity of that sense bunch of grasses to the bottom of the frame. It just feels a little bit tight there. Uh, and I think if I just spent a couple more minutes, I probably could have framed that a little better. There's still some nice light on the foreground because although the sun has set, the sky is actually on fire behind the camera. I'll have to turn it around in a second, but it's providing some lovely soft light on this foreground rock. So I'm actually shooting this scene in portrait so that I can get the mountains behind in a bit of a tighter crop. So focusing on the more pyramidal quality of those two mountains, Ben A and Leich, as the cloud was swirling around. So really happy with possibly my final shot, but I'm going to keep shooting and see what I can get. So I thought I'd start by showing you what was going on behind the camera at that point, because the entire sky was on fire, which is why there was that lovely soft light on the foreground. So sometimes it's better to ignore those fiery contrasty colors and go for something a bit more subtle. And I'm glad that I did. In fact, I think this is my best image from that evening shoot. Uh, and obviously I did get quite a few images that I was very pleased with, but this is the best of them, I think, uh, for a couple of reasons. Generally, I think the, the composition uh, does, does work nicely, but mostly the foreground has this lovely implied story to it, which can be really hard to find in grand landscape um, wider views which tend to be more straightforward. You're illustrating a location. So for me here, we've got three rocks or perhaps four uh, in concert with this larger stone. So there's an implied relationship between those rocks that's helped by this almost semicircular shape between the four smaller rocks. Uh, so for me, that, that works very nicely and it's hard to find that kind of thing uh, when you are shooting these wider scenes. And as for the 
backdrop, well, we've got two of Scotland's most iconic mountains there, Ben A and Liech, and the two peaks on each of those mountains, Selvor and Spidian Acorile, uh, are looking pretty much at their best, wreathed in, in cloud as they are. And um, the peak on the right, that's Spidian Acorile in particular, the cloud has actually made it look even more pyramidal, which is uh, ideal. Uh, so the mountain backdrop is is great, but it's that foreground that really excites me about this image. So I think that is the end of a pretty successful shoot up here. It's uh, been pretty frantic and difficult to vlog actually, because there's so many things that I wanted to try. And then I also had the uh, odd moment, of course, of needing to help the clients or point out shots to them uh, or get out their way. So it's uh, it's a little bit difficult doing coherent videos in those circumstances, not least because I'm so excited. This was actually the final shot uh, that I've just taken. Just really like these uh, two rocks here. So uh, nice way to round it up. off. We might try a tent shot. Uh, our tents are kind of bunched together, but they are in front of the mountain there. But that means waiting around for, uh, for another hour or so uh, to make that happen. So uh, maybe people want bed because it's 10.30 uh, here. So sunset uh, does happen pretty late. Um, so yeah we're gonna head back to the tents definitely have a hot drink uh maybe do a tent shot but i think for now that's the the end of this vlog and i hope you've enjoyed it it's definitely been one of the best evenings i've had on a scottish mountain so this was taken just before I recorded that last video clip there, but it was still long after sunset and there was a really lovely red glow behind the camera still, which has picked up all of those red colors in the Torridonian sandstone. So pretty much ideal lighting to shoot this scene. And I realized that I'd actually photographed this location, this rock once before, um, many years before when I visited in dry conditions. And I think my composition the second time around is a little better positioning the rock off to the left instead uh, although it does create this slightly quirky effect of a sort of square in the middle of the image if you join up the two most prominent peaks and the two most prominent rocks uh, but I kind of like that it's uh, maybe a little bit different and it's nice to have the added detail of the moon poking through the haze there above the mountain. Now I thought I'd quickly mention my calendar before the end of this video because if you'd like to find a way to support this channel and, and all the time that I've put into making these videos then buying a calendar would be a great way to do that. It's a calendar of the Northwest Highlands and it's some of the best images that I've taken of the area over the last few years after the publication of my book Northwest. So please do have a look at that on my website that's uh, alexnail.com and I'll put a link in the liner notes and of course if you have enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this albeit I can't promise the kind of epic light we had on on this trip then please do subscribe